Hey guys, I'm going to start a new video series. I'm going to do this about every two months. So this will be my July slash August video. And what I'm going to do is show what's ripening, uh, what's fruiting, what's ready, and just give you an idea uh, what kind of stuff we can get different times of year here in Central Florida. Now each year I get a few new things as the plants mature. So it's going to be kind of interesting. And there are a few, there's actually five on my list for today. And here's the first one. So this is Barbados cherry. And you can see it's got a lot of flowers on it. It actually already has some fruit. And let's see if we can get this. There's actually got some bugs on it there. But this is already fruited, but it didn't put out a whole lot. Uh, we've had some weird weather this year. Interestingly enough, uh, none of my mango trees produced fruit. So they started to, and then we had a little cold snap. It all fell off. They just never recovered. But you can see here, we've got flowers. We've got fruit. It's the Barbados cherry this time. It's just got a ton of flowers. It's a little late in the afternoon, so we've got some afternoon sun there. There you can see a fruit that's just about ready to pick. And there's just, uh, like I said, tons of buds on here. Now, uh, another thing about these videos, this is strictly trees that don't fruit year round. Now for um, uh, things that are, I'll call it perennial, or at least that you can eat year round, I'm not gonna put those here, I'm gonna do those in a separate video. So again, here's our first one. We're gonna go alphabetical order. And this is the Barbados cherry. It's doing really good. So flowering and fruiting. Unfortunately, it's also attracting a lot of unwanted visitors. But that's the price you pay when you don't spray any pesticides. Okay, on to the next plant. Now, this one I've shown in other videos with the fruit on it. Usually when I do my property tours, there's fruit on it. This is black sapote. And this one has been pretty reliable every year. But it also gets more fruit every year. The tree's getting bigger, more productive. And um, the only thing about it, they take a long, long time before they're ready to eat. And then it's a very short window. I have to get them before the animals do. So this is doing good. The plant is growing kind of weird. I'll back up here. And uh, I think it's leaning over to reach the sun because this side of the property, so this is looking east, this is your morning sun and it's very heavily wooded, so it's shaded in the morning. So I think it's trying to reach the afternoon sun. But anyways, so this is one that is fruiting, but they're not quite ready. So it's a really nice plant though, tree, I guess you'd call it. Uh, here's one that's got something on it. Not sure if that's any good still. So. Black sapote. All right, let's go hit the next one list. Now, who doesn't love this one? Got some dragon fruit. Look at that. That one's getting close. So this is uh, one of my dragon fruit uh, trellises, I guess you call it. There's a fruit over there. I really need to trim this grass down. It's a bit a lot of work keeping up with that. Not sure there's any on this side. Doesn't seem to be. It flowers a lot, but only about 15-20% of them turn into a fruit. But let's go look at another tree. This dragon fruit's way in the backyard. And it actually has a higher percentage of fruit to flower. And check this out. There's some little cucamelons. I got these growing everywhere. So when this creates flowers, it's more likely to fruit. Now this is the white variety. The previous one is the red. Uh, I suspect it's because there's, no, there's not as much lighting out here. You see this plant is a lot smaller. 
but again it's more productive I guess per branch you'd say per flower uh, so I think all the lighting around the house keeps the moths away and that's what we need to fruit to uh, pollinate these but anyways so dragon fruit just about ready let's go on to the next thing okay next on the list a little hard to focus in on it because there's a lot of stuff here but I'll give you an idea it's a, it's a big plant it's grown a lot and this is an ever-bearing mulberry and I said I wasn't going to include things in this video that fruit year-round this almost fruits year-round. See, there's fruit all over it. Um, but it does it in flushes. So it's, it does, a, I don't know, maybe four or five flushes a year. And then the birds come in, they clean it out. I have two of the ever-bearing varieties. Now the other varieties, they're not fruiting right now, but they only fruit maybe twice a year. So I'm trying to get some closer pictures of the fruit. Uh, it's a little little thin right now, so it's, again, it's on that down cycle, but I can come out here every day and grab a few. There is some that are ready. So again, I'm in zone 9B, central Florida on the east coast. So you can give you some idea how that might compare to your area. Definitely a hot summer this year. Rain has been sporadic. We'll get a lot of rain, then it'll stop. Like right now, it's not expected to rain for at least the next week or 10 days, but we'll see. So let's move on to the next plant. Here's a fig. Now these have been producing for several months and they keep coming up with more. You see a couple of them here. And let's see, go over here. Again, got some new fruit. So this particular tree, it seems to produce not quite year round, but I'll say for seven to eight months, I believe this is a turkey fig. So it does a couple flushes. Now there's a couple figs nearby. I've got a total of about seven or eight varieties. So I'd say for seven, eight months out of the year, uh, I've got figs. They're all in different stages of ripening, but at least a couple times a month, I'm able to eat them. So these are a really good one to have. Number six on the list is grapes. We've got a lot of grapes this year. Small bunches, but lots of them. They're all over this plant. And I will tell you, squirrels love these. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna keep them away. Each year, it's a little bit of a battle. I just get a few grapes, even though there's a lot of them on here. So we'll see how it goes this year. But this plant's been productive every year for the last three years. Oh, and on top of here, some more dragon fruit. There's one flowering right there. So right, that uh, post right here is actually a pine tree that was cut down. So there's some dragon fruit. Grew up on the top of that and it's going out. I don't see any more flowers. But lots of grapes. All right, let's go see number seven. Guava. So guava has been productive every single year. But what's different this year is I have several different varieties. So every year this particular tree creates a lot of fruit but my other varieties are producing this year. So that's new. So while this tree isn't new, and this particular fruit, I do have some other types that are producing. So that's pretty exciting to me. Um, this particular one isn't the greatest as far as flavor and such. Maybe I just have to find out the right way to use it, but I can't wait to try the other varieties, see how that goes. All right, let's go on to number eight. This is Jamaican cherry, also known as strawberry tree. Now, this has been a solid producer every year. It's a little tough to see the fruit on this one. I have a bigger tree in the front yard. Frankly, I'm getting tired of walking back and forth. 
but there is ripe fruit on it and there is a lot although they may be hard to see just tons and tons and tons of green fruit so hopefully you can see that yeah this thing just gets absolutely loaded now these produce almost year-round not quite fully year-round so I mentioned this video is going to be stuff that does does not necessarily produce all year I want to keep that in a separate video but this one produces about eight or nine months out of the year so just like the everbearing mulberry it's not a hundred percent so it makes it into this this video so again that's the Jamaican cherry not a whole lot of nutrition in these as far as I know but they sure taste good okay let's go to the next next one's a new one this year so it's fun this is a huge tree and it's only a couple years old and it was grown from a cutting from a friend of mine I think I've had it about three years it's uh, 25 30 feet tall and this is Java plum so this is the first year it's fruited and let me tell you it fruited this thing is absolutely loaded I mean every every branch just tons and tons so I can't wait to try these people have different opinions on these uh, if I could zoom in up there I won't right now but yeah there's just tons and tons of fruit up there well fruit buds here let's look at this branch look at this it's like huge bunches of grapes so again the reviews are mixed some people like them some don't uh, that could vary by the tree I'm sure and yeah, you can hear an airboat in the background so this is new for this year first time it's fruited okay let's go to another one number 10 on the list is one I've shown in every property tour video and this is another one like the everbearing mulberry and the strawberry tree that produces almost year-round but not quite hundred percent and this is the June plum so it's a heavy producer not a huge tree I'm looking to see usually there's some bigger fruit on it because it tries to fruit all year but I've been taking them off well here's some that are a little bigger not quite ripe though uh, but I've been taking them off trying to direct more energy to the tree to grow see here's some that are getting close as well uh, and I, I put them out in the plant stand for people to take so they can eat them they can grow the seeds whatever they want to do now these you can grow from a seed and you'll get fruit within 18 months 24 months so if you need a instantly productive plant June plums a great one so I showed you a lot of the fruit but here's some of the flowers so again it it produces about eight or nine months out of the year very productive plant let's go see number 11 now I'm actually going to do number 11 and number 12 kind of together but what we have here is lemons yeah they're green they're just not quite ripe this is a Meyer lemon so they get pretty big but this plant or tree has produced the last couple of years and uh, it doesn't look the greatest we have that citrus greening here I don't know if it's affecting it or not but it does create fruit and they do ripen There's another one down there so given that let's go see number 12 I have to do a little walking through the jungle jungle to get to these and number 12 is a lime and this is the first year this one has produced so that's kind of neat so not a lot I've, I've taken a couple fruit off of it already but you can see there's a lime there's one over there uh, there's one up top here swinging around um, might be one or two more not a lot again it's its first year 
but that's exciting. I'm allergic to citrus, so I can't really do uh, oranges and grapefruits, but I can do some lemon and lime and drinks and when cooking, so that works out for me. All right, let's go see number 13. This scraggly looking tree here is a day avocado. They're small. I'm not sure exactly how big they're gonna get. But right now this is my only avocado that's got fruit on it. And it's the, it's actually not the first year this is fruited, but last year they fell off immediately. So it's actually hanging on to its fruit. Again, we've had weird weather this year, so none of the mangoes held their fruit. And same with the other avocados, but this guy has held on and looks like I'm gonna get, hopefully get something out of it if I can get it before the animals. All right, let's go see the next. This one's struggling this year as well, but it's finally fruiting. And this is papaya. So just a couple teeny fruit. I've got a lot of papaya around the property, but they're just having a hard time this year. I don't know if it's the weather, lack of rain, the late cold snap. Don't know what it is. Not really productive this year, however, starting to see some fruiting. So we'll see how this goes. Keep my eye on it. Maybe put some more plants in the ground. It's getting kind of late in the year for it, but you never know. Number 15 on my list is passion fruit. So this, this guy just vines all over the place. And this will be the second year it's produced. Unfortunately, the fruit are kind of buried back where it's hard to see them. You know, I'll take my word for it on this one. It is fruiting. Last year I got, I'd say about 10 fruit from it. But I have several of these vines going now, so this isn't the only area. And I'm trying to propagate it even more. And I want to get another variety. This one's a yellow one. So I want to try some other ones. So anyways, it's a pretty good producer once it gets going. Can't wait to get a lot more trees. I have friends that have them just absolutely draped through their oak trees and such. And they just get dozens of fruit every week. Now this is a cool tree and it's also the first time it's fruited. This is a red wax jambu. Not only is it's first time, but it's loaded. And it makes these cool little bell shaped fruit. And because this is the red wax jambu, they're gonna turn red. Here's some starting to get a little pinkish, but look at it, there's just fruit everywhere. They say when these cheap trees are mature, they can produce several hundred. And I don't doubt that one bit. It's supposed to have a pretty good taste. Really neat plant. Just like the black sapote though, it's over on the side property. And it's getting a little bit of a lean. So again, got the shade over here from the morning sun. So, but it's staying pretty symmetrical, growing up pretty straight, which I like. Number 17 and next to the last, we have star fruit. One of my favorite fruits. Now this guy has already produced this year and it just flowered a bunch. So even though the flowers are gone, there's little fruits all over it. So there will be more fruit coming. There's a couple here, uh, more over there. So you can see all these fruits hanging. They're all over the place. So we're gonna get more fruit. All the fruits this year have been small though, compared to my hand there. They're usually 50% uh, bigger at least. I need to get more star fruit trees. Like I say, it's one of my favorites. And this one is very shaded too. So I'll bet if it had more sun, it would do better. But if you don't have a star fruit or you haven't tried one, I highly recommend it. Okay, let's take a walk out to the front yard for the last tree of this tour. 
Okay, last but certainly not least, I have to be pretty quick on this. This is a busy road and people are gonna drive by and talk to me. This is tropical almond. Now, it's not something you're gonna make a meal out of, but um, this is the first year it's fruiting, so let me get a, some close-up of some of this. So there's some uh, flowers there. Hi. Hey. Um, this tree is grown from seed. Let me back up some more, and it's about uh, four years old. So it's really nice. I like the way these grow. They grow in layers. I keep the lower area trimmed out. I can actually sit on my lawnmower and go through here. And um, it's kind of mixed in with the Mexican sunflower here. But a nice shade tree. Again, the first this is the first year I've seen the, uh, the flowers or seed pods. I don't know what you want to call them. So I'm hoping I get some seeds. If I don't, I'm pretty confident I will next year just because the amount of growth it's had and it's doing so well. So that's, a, that's kind of a summary of what's fruiting. And again, I'm not putting anything in here that fruits year round or that you can eat year round. I'm gonna do a separate video for that stuff. I am on the front of the property right now. You can see there's the take a plant, leave a plant stand. Still doing really well. And uh, so that's it. I appreciate you watching and uh, any comments or questions, just put them down in the video comments.